In this video, Jamie's going to share how to make $1,600 in sales value selling used books on Amazon. That's finding 100 books in a weekend. And Jimmy's going to share with you how he does it out on the West Coast. Welcome to the channel, Jimmy, and take it away. All right. So for me, I started about six months ago. I started watching uh, the videos on how to source books and kind of like how to get set up. I started buying the tools and everything um, and got started. My first place I went to ever was a Goodwill. And just like I've heard other people say, at first you're kind of like scanning, not wanting people to see what you're doing and stuff. But as you get more scans in and more comfortable with it, people ask you questions, you just start having conversations. And next thing you know, they could be the next person telling you, hey, there's a book sale going on down the street. You know, it's just about networking. It's like that's the biggest thing is networking, talking to people and finding out more and more places. Um, for the weekends, for me, what I mainly do is I go to estate sales and I go to library sales. Um, ongoing library sales are great. If you can find a big library sale, that's awesome too, because they're going to have even more stuff out there. Um, for me with estate sales, I use uh, Google Maps and I just start typing in all the addresses of the places I want to go. So I do my research ahead of time on the estate sale website. I think it's estatesale.net. Yep. And I, uh, I look at the pictures and a lot of times, you know, you, they may not even put that they have books in the pictures, but if you're looking at the, if you're paying attention to the pictures, you'll see a bookshelf in the background, or you might see you know some table books or something. So you can kind of get an idea of what they have going on. Some estate sales you'll see they've got like a, a full library going on in there, and those are the ones that are like number one priority for me to get to. There's, right there's estatesales.net and estatesales.org. Somebody on the feed the beast call last week shared estatesales.org. So oh, I'm going to add that on there. That's awesome. Yeah. So I ty start typing in addresses in Google Maps and it doesn't matter what order you type them in because then you start rearranging them on there. And I find what route works best for me um, to try and get through because you're on a you're on a time crunch with the state sales. They're usually only going from like eight in the morning, seven thirty in the morning till about two or three in the afternoon. Yep. So you've really got to be pounding the pavement on those. Um, and normally I can walk into a place when I get there and I can tell pretty quickly if it's going to be you know good or not within the first couple of scans or looking at the quality of the books on there i've gone into places where i took one look and i'm like this is going to be awesome because the books are in great condition you can tell they're uh non-fiction books that are you know have barely been touched sometimes or if, if at all and um you just I start going for it uh for me religious books spiritual books stuff like that bibles oh my gosh bibles I didn't realize that there's such a market for them, you know, for them. Um, the table books, they tend to overprice those. I've noticed at the estate sales, but they are willing to negotiate with you on those. If you're like, hey, look, I'm using up to date, like live information. You guys are selling this thing for like 25. There's just no profit in this for me. I, I'm, you know, I'll buy it if you pop it down to five or 10. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they'll negotiate with you. It's pretty awesome. Other estate sales I've walked into, the place is kind of dingy. The books look like garbage. Um, and I'll scan a couple if I'm like, see something like I'll try and cherry pick a couple out of there, but I don't waste much time in those places. I kind of write it off as, all right, I, I checked it out, move on to the next place. Don't waste my time. Um, that's, that's one side of it. And estate sales are hit or miss in my area. It's like uh, this weekend is going to be an amazing weekend for estate sales. Last weekend was a complete dud. So instead I, I hit up libraries um, and it's really important, like you guys talk about, you know, keeping track of where you're hitting, like, you know, um, and go to Lister. I put on there all the places I go to. So that way I can track where am I getting my books from? Um, I've found that it's a couple of places. It's no point in even going there. It's, it's out of the way to begin with. And there's no books up there. Um, other places are like just little honey pots. I go to I can go to every week and they're going to have books. Yeah, um, you're going to like what's coming out soon. So on go to Lister, he's entering his source where he got the books from. So maybe an estate sale, maybe Goodwill, maybe Savers, wherever. Uh, pretty soon we're going to have source metrics. So it's going to be a dashboard that shows you which places bring you the most sales and how much profit each place brings you. And you'll be able to set the date range for the whole year. And you'll see, oh, estate sales have made me 23% of my profit or maybe 46% of your profit. And so that's coming out very soon. So it's good that you're tracking that. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm, that was something that you recommended in one of your videos before that I really took to heart because it's like you can't measure something if you don't, you know, if you don't track it. So, yeah, it's it's been huge for helping me kind of streamline where the places I'm going to are. Um, other thing I've started doing in the beginning, I started with a shoestring budget with this. I think like a lot of people do uh, getting this up and running. 
And as I've made more profits, I've just I've never taken anything back out of the business. I always keep reinvesting it in. I think one of the videos was don't be afraid to buy the more expensive book for the bigger profit. And yeah. I've started I've started doing that more. Some of these collectible books that I can buy and I can you know make a huge profit on. You know, you're nervous the first couple of times. And then when they start selling, you're like, what was I nervous about? It's trust the process. Look at the numbers. Look at the metrics. Yeah. And just go for it. You know, are you reading Kiva graphs? Um, I'm not great at Kiva graphs yet. I've been I've been trying to learn them more and more. But when I'm trying to keep my scan rate up high, that's when I I, I like I will try and pull up the Kiva graph when I hit something and I'm like, ooh, this ha this has a potential here. Yeah, you know, just look for um, some green spikes. Yeah. So I I'm really good though at looking at the data very quickly at a glance though and telling. OK, this is popping green, but Amazon selling this for mm -hmm. right at the same price or a little and I, then I, then that's going to eat up my profit. I know the price is tanking down. I can glance at that in a second now. Yeah. Whereas before I probably would have bought that. The price would have tanked and I wouldn't have made any money on the book. Yeah. Um, Do you know how many scans you get in in a weekend? Oh, uh, I would say at least 10,000. Let me see here. Nice. At least Trying to see if I've switched over recently on my 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 scanning software, so this isn't completely up to date. Yeah, so far for this week, um, it looks like I'm around like eleven thousand scans. Nice. And you're pulling uh, how many books a week? Um, I'm pulling at least a hundred a weekend right now. So I started off because um, I don't want to get myself discouraged in the beginning. When I started, I started with a very modest goal of like fifty. And I kept that up for the first month because I also work a full time job and I'm a single parent to four girls. So it takes a lot of time. So oh, I was yeah. like, I don't want to get discouraged because this is something I really believe in. I want to see it happen. So I set my, my, my bar a little bit lower. And so when I break through it, I was like, you know what? I, I know I can push myself better. And as I learned the sources and places to go, I got better and more efficient with my time. And as you get better and more efficient with your time, you're not wasting time at junk places and you're hitting the good places. You start you start realizing I went from 50, I started doing 75, and then I started bumping it up to 100. And I'm like, okay, this is this is doable. And now I'm starting to think even bigger, like how can I get this higher than 100? How can I start taking this to the next level? Yeah, 100%. Well, you're on the right path, brother. Um, thanks so much for coming on the channel. For anyone that wants to you know, network more with Jimmy or people like Jimmy, consider joining the GoToLister Facebook group. Uh, all you need is a free trial of GoToLister. And Within that group, we share strategies, tips, you know, stuff that's working. And also consider joining Feed the Beast Challenge. If you guys go to the link below, starthumble.com forward slash beast, you'll get access to my step-by-step -step course. And I guarantee if you go through that challenge and you really push yourself, you will make more money. So uh, we do weekly coaching calls. That's every Tuesday, 730 Eastern time. Just click the link below to join that. And uh, Jimmy, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me.